it feels to me that if I let myself be forgiving and trusting and flow with the people that are around me, that it, it ends badly. Yeah, I think the, the question of honesty and self-deception comes in because clearly when we talk about manipulation, the, underneath the very construct of manip manipulation is control. And really we want to be free. We want to be f totally free of, of the idea that we can control or be controlled. Uh, just free from the whole control construct. And to me that's, that's where all this mind training comes in, in the sense that, like in the Course it says, what do you want, freedom of the body or freedom of the mind, for both you cannot have. And we start to go, okay, all right, that sounds pretty good. I would like to have a free mind then, um, if that's the way it's going to go. And then, for me, I found myself in constant going around, being in this dream, and this dream, and this dream, and this dream, different circumstances in my life where there seemed to be elements of control. Like when I was in, um, when I was in, you know, grade school and junior high and high school, and there were control issues with the teachers. You know, there were times when I just really didn't feel to do the homework or to do the assignment, and yet there seemed to be this reflection of, you know, do it or else kind of a thing. And then it just so happened that my, my mother was a teacher in the same school, so I felt like, you know, they had, I don't know what kind of discussions in the faculty lounge, but I felt like instead of having one or two sets of eyes on me at home, I felt like I had all these sets of eyes watching me, you know, like I had to really, you know, behave, uh, or it would really come back at me in a kind of a fierce way. And, and then when I w got to graduate school and when I was taking psychology, um, I remember um, still feeling that same kind of control thing with, with, uh, with various fellow classmates, and also particularly with uh, professors, certain professors. It's like a control game going on that I was very aware of, and it really bothered me. And then when I, I did some counseling practica that were part of my school psychology coursework, uh, they recorded me in doing these simulation sessions, and um, the evaluation came back that, um, that I had a control issue. Uh, and I thought, well, that's an interesting reflection <laughs> back from the evaluations of these counseling sessions. So I did my, started to do my master's thesis on locus of control. Uh, do we have an external locus of control or is it an internal locus of control? And that was right before the course came into my life. So this control uh, concept, you know, and belief was very central in my life either being controlled or feeling like I was controlling or being told that I was controlling back and forth. And then, then you go through a series of relationships and you know, you go even in the best of relationships, no matter how joyful it is, you know, you get to this certain point in interpersonal, you know, significant other relationships where the words come out of the other person's mouth, like, don't control me. You know, it, it comes out again. So I think this is like, you're touching on a very, very deep issue. And, and I would say that, that for me the way that it's gone is that as I got into the, like you're coming here with really a, the giving vibe. You're here to show up, to share, to shine, to extend. And that vibe and that expression is the most helpful thing that you can do to rinse the mind of, of the control concept whether it's perceiving that others are that way, or that you have been controlled by them, or others have been controlled by you, it's still the same concept underneath. And it's through giving and extending that that rinses away. And that's the way it's gone in my life. Now I, now I can talk about, you know, live and let live, and actually feel that it's an experience, instead of just like, kind of like a hopeful ideal.